my name is Phyllis Douglas, and I guess you would, I, I, I call myself a healer, though I don't really care for that word because as I am working with people or on different projects and things like that, it's really about facilitating a transformation. So, and that can include healing. So really with my work, I am creating doorways or what I like to call access points to a higher perspective or a higher level of consciousness or healing or whatever it is that that individual or that circumstance um, is in need of. The primary key to my work is my work with the divine order of the Elohim. So I work with the angels and they are really a part of every aspect of the work that I do and they help to facilitate healing work, transmutation, and so forth through the transmissions and the activations that I provide. So it really started when I was a little girl. I, I was just, I was kind of born <laughs> awake in, in a sense. Um, I do remember my actual birth and I also remember the moment that I forgot, <laughs> right? Uh, and so I have always been you know, interested in healing as a young girl with like animals and so forth, you know, pets and everything. And just kind of the knowledge that I knew that that was something that was going to be in my future. And I've always sung. So I have always utilized my voice and I have always spoken in what I would now know as an angelic or celestial language. And my parents and my sister always thought I was just making up gobbledygook, you know, with my voice. But but really it was, I would use it to change my emotions. You know, if I wanted a happy state or, you know, if I was sad or, or I would just kind of bust out in song. And so for me, I always knew, maybe unconsciously that I was changing something, that I was transforming something either within myself or outside of myself or, you know, helping another individual. And so it really started when I was a little girl and it just kind of, as I walked the path, it began to expand and it became basically what it is now. Yeah. Well, one of the things is there's that, that you always have a higher perspective or a higher sense of knowing what something truly is. So even when someone would say something to me, I could read behind, I could read between the lines. So I knew that they were not telling the truth or they thought they were telling the truth, but I could tell that their words were not in alignment with what it is they were actually saying or what it is they were doing. And so there was always a little bit of that, of having that understanding of who someone truly is beyond the face that they're trying to put on for you. The majority of people that I work with are women. I do get men every now and then, but the majority of people are women. And they are people that were really focused on, you know, it's that old paradigm and the old beliefs when they were growing up, uh, you know, becoming a good wife, becoming a mother, taking care of your family, you know, sometimes pushing the career aside. And these are primarily women who have raised, you know, they were married, they raised a family, now they're divorced or their children have left home and they feel empty. And they're realizing all of a sudden, because they don't have all of this outside stimulus, they don't, they're not giving of themselves to other people. They're finding that when they have time for themselves, they're understanding that there's so much more to this existence. There's so much more to their life. And they just feel lost because they don't, they have that feeling, that sense that there's so much more and there's something that they're missing, but they don't know what that is. And so it's really about a process of awakening. I think when, when people aren't distracted, when things just, you know, when, when their children leave home or what have you for these women, all of a sudden the distractions from recognizing their own worth and their own unlimited possibilities, right? 
all of a sudden there's no distractions and they they just began to understand that they can't quite tap into it but something's missing like what is missing from my life so i always get people in saying i don't know what it is something something just is missing i f i feel lost or i'm not happy and what it is that i'm doing even though i've had this you know job for 10 20 years what have you and so when i work with people it's about it's a it's a process of awakening it's a process of truly understanding what their true nature of being is as an individuation of god okay as basically being this infinite creative being who is creating these experiences within their life and with then that acknowledgement and through what i teach and through you know clearing work and energetic work and so forth the transmissions and activations that i do uh to, and even occasionally you know spiritual development and so forth i'm opening i'm creating these access points i'm creating these doorways for people then to walk through and they, they just suddenly make these discoveries. It's not a whole lot that I, I'm not doing anything other than creating an opening for their own higher consciousness to kind of step through as well, to make that connection. There are so many people that fear change. They don't want things to change, right? And they fear the unknown and they fear having their lives changed from what they are used to and that's one of the key things that are that's holding people back is fear and so a lot of people they don't they don't like their lives many people have these horrible things that are happening in their life but they rather stay there because they have a sense of comfort because it's something that's known so many times people are unwilling to change because they don't know what resides within the future. And so that would be this fear of unknown, thinking that, well, what I have now, because I know it, I can deal with it, right? I know how to respond to it. I'd rather just stay here. But we can't do that, right? We have to awaken. We have to consciously elevate ourselves beyond the knowledge of just being this physical form. We have to understand what our true nature of being is. We have to. And, you know, there's beings on other planets and so forth that have already gone through this, have done that, and they are assisting and, and guiding us through our process as well. Our true nature of being is not just this physical reality. It's also the non-physical realities. It's multidimensional. So you have all of these things going on. And when you have somebody that is thinking, this is, this is me, this is all that I am, then it becomes a challenge because you're still experiencing the outside stimulus that is coming in. Right? And you have to come to a point where you understand this, this isn't, this isn't me. Right? So when there's a challenge, I think that it's really important to try to find or seek assistance and guidance for that as well. And I didn't have that when I was growing up, but, but nowadays there are, Churches, yes, too. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with religion, but there's also, you know, different spiritual classes and workshops and things that you can, that you can take, so that you just be, you just come to the understanding. You can understand what is happening. You can understand what, what is going on. My life's mission, is, to really open a door or create an access point for the individuals that I work with to understand that they are more than this body, to understand their true nature of being as an infinite, an, an infinite and divine creator of, their, of this reality, of their lives. So, you know, I understand that we are each individuations of infinite source, God, having the experience of a physical life. And I understand that we are the creators of this life. We choose our experiences. We create, we make these experiences happen in whatever way, shape or form we need to, because from that experience, good, bad or ugly, there's something that we need to learn. There's a takeaway from that, that then allows us to become even more of who we truly are and to move forward to bigger and better things. 
but we're not meant to hold on to an experience. We're meant to have an experience and take what we need and mold the next experience, right? And onward and forward.